yourself a new partner? Hands up. The guy's nuts. You have a death wish? He gets the job done, Rosie. Yeah, he's a bit rough around the edges. It's time for show and tell. The concept started with the originators of, of Luxaflux, uh, uh, Peter Morwick and Adrian Stevens. Um, and they came up with the idea that they wanted to do an, an action movie game. We really wanted to do characters and action. So we were looking for an angle on, on how to marry the, the two genres. And uh, at that time, my wife and I were into um, these uh, LA Private Eye uh, novels by Robert Price, the Joe Pike series. And suddenly it sort of occurred to me that that there really hasn't been a successful take on the on sort of a contemporary cop genre in video games. And it really appealed to me and I brought it to the guys and we discussed it and we really liked it. So we pitched it to Activision, the publisher, and uh, they liked it as well. So here we are. I think every game starts out, you know, trying to do something innovative and something special. And, and uh, it takes the right people and the right time and the right idea to, to make that happen. Okay, LA, here I come. The biggest challenge with, the, with this game in general is just to try and realize a city as big as Los Angeles. To store a triangle for every single facet of every single building and every single road, tree, uh, piece of ground was just unfeasible. The plan to, to build the city out of um, splines and patches, basically procedural geometry was um, was an idea that uh, I came up with when we first started this and we weren't sure if we were really going to be able to do it. It had never been tried before. Once we realized that the GPS data was available publicly, uh, we had to learn a lot about the format of that data and how we can crunch that data into something usable by the game. We used a variety of resources to really come up with this accurate LA. Uh, GPS data, topographical maps, and even satellite images to really recreate Los Angeles as it stands now. We have variations in subdivisions, neighborhoods going from uh, the wealthy Beverly Hills area to the sort of seedy, shady Hollywood suburbs. So really, we've done a really good job of accurately portraying Los Angeles as it stands today in 2003. Much of the data is actually generated on the fly, meaning that Polygons or triangles that are drawn aren't actually existing in a static form. We basically say we have a road that has this curvature and this type, and we generate the data required to draw that on the screen real time. It'll make sure that um, you know at least half a mile around you is always there. It's, it's a real-time GPS system. You could be playing the game, your girlfriend could call you on the phone and go, oh my god, I'm lost. And rather than going to the computer and doing the typical, you know, pull up the the website that has the maps on it, you're like, well, I'm in True Crime Streets of LA, let me just go ahead and drive down to where you are. Where are you? You're on the corner of where? Some of the cars have hundreds of parts to them. And I, I, there are parts that can be damaged that will fall off the car. Uh, and you'll be able to drive this car in almost undrivable conditions in real life. Yeah, so sue me. Gonna see you right back. We created a set of cars that, you know, they're supposed to look realistic. Uh, but we designed them sort of from scratch. We took the visual cues from what those vehicles would be and designed something completely new. You can run through a shootout and when that guy drops that AK-47, you flip it up into your hand and now you've got a pistol in your right hand and an AK in the other. Additionally, when you grab those two, uh, as an example, you have a shotgun in your left hand and an AK-47 in your right, each arm targets independently. So you can take out two targets at once. So if you're flying forward and there's a target to your left and to your right, and the shotgun side is closer, you're gonna blast that guy while strafing the, the guy to your right with the AK-47. It allows you to really plan how you're going to go out and attack. Sometimes it's run and gun, and sometimes it's, you know, sneak around and try to hide because those guys have badass weapons. Try to pick up the weapon. Heck, heck two shotguns running around with two sawed-offs um, with guys coming at you. You know, you're blasting people left and right. It's very Hong Kong cinema inspired. Basically, uh, one of my main focuses is destructibles, or as a lot of uh, gamers like to call it, crap that blows up. Boom, bada boom! Our destruction for the interiors is pretty fairly uh, complex. It's really intense stuff. I mean, it's fighting that I don't think gamers are used to. You can upgrade your set 
weapons and your set skills um, based on uh, earning enough points to enter these these uh, training facilities, 24-7 uh, locations. As you leave the EOD on some of your missions, as you're driving down the street, you will find uh, locations where um, that'll be highlighted. They won't be based on your mission, but if you run into them, you will find yourself either in a shooting range or a driving, uh, driving uh, slalom course, uh, where you will be able to expand your, your capabilities as a driver or as a shooter. One of the things that I am in particular excited about in this game is, is really our continuous branching storyline. Um, a few years back, um, the video game establishment sort of declared the, the death of, of the fusion of Hollywood and, and, and video games, and it was a bummer. So really what I try to do here with True Crime is to create a game that's very playable, that doesn't really lose much in terms of playability, um, yet still gives the player enough of narrative and, and, and story to keep it really interesting and to keep the player engrossed uh, and give him the suspense of disbelief. And ultimately we have three very different paths in the story and three very different endings. So um, there, is, there is multiple ways of playing this game and uh, even and the greatest thing about it really is that even the unseasoned player, player who's not very good, will get enough of a game here, will get enough of an experience to, to enjoy himself. You'll definitely get different cinematics based on different outcomes of, of what you've done in the game. Jimmy, this had better check out. Stop busting my balls, man. I'm being straight with you. That's a good boy. Hey, Rosie. Say hello to the poster child against inbreeding, Jimmy Fool. And I suppose that would make you the poster child for anger management. Likewise, you know, if it's raining in a cinematic at that time of day and the cinematic takes place outside, then it's raining outside when that cinematic's taking place. The most challenging, I think, might have been the nightclub scene because there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in there. It's a little more technical, I think, uh, than some of the other, some of the other environments that, uh, you know, rotating lights, you know, and a disco ball, which is sort of um, reflecting lights all over the place. You know, it's tricky. It's a tricky crazy. Hey, Dick, I give the music a three. No lyrics, and you can't dance to it. Well, like all, all of the other things in the game, uh, we really wanted to bring a really legitimate sort of voice uh, or, or spoken word to the game. And, and we did this through uh, hiring you know, some amazing voiceover talent, including Christopher Walken. You got yourself a new partner? And, and Gary Oldman. You keep turning up like a bad $2 bill, Detective King. CCH Pounder, you might know her from The Shield. Nick, this is uh, Agent in Charge Masterson from the uh, FBI. We also have Michael Madsen, who plays uh, an old cop buddy of your dad. Dear father, when he got into trouble with internal affairs, I promised him I'd watch out for his boys. We have uh, Michelle Rodriguez, who plays your partner, who gets, you know, uh, injured early on in the story and uh, you know, ends up being your helper the whole, the whole way through. I don't mean any disrespect, but why Nick? The guy's nuts. Once we're, we've got all the voiceover collected, I take that and I take our character models and our environments, which have been provided by the other people working on the game, and I coalesce all those into what's called a rough animatic. That's basically a very rough animation of uh, each individual cutscene. And once we've got that set, we take those and bring them to the motion capture studio, uh, where we rehearse with our actors and get them uh, acquainted with each scene. And uh, then we record all the animation data um, we get it back, and then I take it and integrate it back into uh, the animatic file. Uh, make sure that the movements line up, that the cameras are properly framing every individual actor, and that uh, everything basically works as it should. What we wind up with at that point is uh, rough motion captured animation, which is broad bodily movements. Uh, we don't have uh, fingers or facial expressions or lip sync at that point or eye animation. So it gets handed off to uh, another set of animators who basically go in and um, 
animate the characters, breathe life into them, add emotions to their face, add the lip sync, add eye movements and hand movements and any other uh, work that needs to be done. And uh, that's the basic uh, pipeline. You picked the wrong party to crash, jackass. Definitely very satisfying to having having an end result after you've been working on something for a year or two. Have the end result of a CD in a box on a shelf, and also to create worlds where you can move around and you know feel like you've really created something. Uh, certainly on that scale, recreating a real city with with streets and and all its. Um, uh, detail, I think it's the first time that I've ever seen it in a video game. Watch shots and beach heat, hot rocks on every block, cold killers on each street, danger on every corner, scum at every turn. This is something that's very cool to us, it's always been very dear to us, and you tend to really pay a lot of attention and take a lot of care of, you know, your baby effectively, and, and all of these people uh, care for this product like it's their child.